Most people have heard the age-old tale that it takes seven years for gum to be digested. In theory, a 10-year-old who swallows a wad of Hubba Bubba would graduate high school before he ever saw it again. Chewing gum is the world's most common habit and one that people rarely think twice about. Essentially, it's just a sweetened and insoluble plastic that loses its flavor in a matter of minutes. Yet people all over the world cannot seem to get enough. Older than you think, chewing gum dates all the way back to the Neolithic period. We know this because tooth imprints have been found in gum made from birch bark tar in Finland, probably under the world's oldest desk. Ancient civilizations chewed gum for its antiseptic and medicinal benefits. In a time before toothpaste and floss, people had to get creative when it came to maintaining their oral health. Ancient Greek, Mayan and Chinese civilizations used their available resources to make their own chewing gum. The ever-innovative Greeks chewed gum in mass, made from the bark of mastic trees. Ginseng, a potent antioxidant, was chewed in ancient China to combat oral diseases and bad breath. Cross-culturally, gum was and remains a staple of human consumption. Fast forward to the 1860s. John Colgan, a Kentucky pharmacist, invented the first flavored chewing gum, which he named Taffy Tolu. Like wildfire, flavored gum spread and the demand for it started to grow rapidly. Modern and commercial chewing gum production erupted in the United States. The added sweetness entices both children and adults, and at that time, it was even common to have a plate of sugar that one could dip their gum into to maintain its sweetness. Gum becomes a pastime, a treat, and its purpose evolves from business to pleasure. Today, gum typically consists of a gum base and sweeteners such as corn syrup, dextrose, or maltitol. A substance called glycerin maintains the moist feeling in your mouth and softeners are added to make the gum more flexible and easier to chew. Nowadays, gum comes in every flavor. Mint, winter mint, bubble mint, spearmint, and about a thousand more types of mint that probably taste exactly the same. In 2017, the global chewing gum market was valued at 16.6 billion US dollars. A staggering 580 million kilograms of gum was consumed in 2016 alone. One of the most important breakthroughs in recent chewing gum history was the development of sugar-free gum. Rising concern over tooth decay due to the high sugar content in regular gum forced manufacturers to find a new way to reach the more health-conscious demographic. Here's what really happens after swallowing a piece of gum. Because the gum base isn't digestible, swallowing gum can lead to a sticky situation. Digestion begins the moment you take a bite. The act of chewing breaks your food into smaller pieces so that it's easier to digest. Your saliva contains enzymes that further contribute to this process. Your stomach secretes acid and powerful enzymes that break down food into a liquid or paste before moving on to the next station. From here, your small intestine works with the pancreas and the liver using even more enzymes and bile to further digest your food. From there, your body passes what is left of your food to the colon. And then comes the final stop and the part I'm sure everyone is familiar with the exiting of your meal, also known as, well, you get the picture. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky. Chewing gum is made up of several components, some of which are digestible and others simply are not. Sweeteners and other added flavors can be absorbed by the body no problem. The gum base, however, cannot. Instead of breaking down normally into a liquid or a paste, chewing gum leaves your body still intact. Because of the body's inability to process gum, your parents were right to warn you against swallowing a piece. While chewing gum is generally considered to be safe, there are various warnings issued against it, particularly when it comes to swallowing. Swallowing gum can lead to a blockage in your digestive system, resulting in constipation. In severe cases, surgery might even be required in order to remove the obstruction. Before, we talked about the emergence of sugar-free gum and its newfound popularity. Unfortunately, although it may seem better for your teeth and lower for sugar consumption, Sugar-free gum contains certain chemicals that may actually be worse than plain old sugar. Just like diet soda, sugar-free gum contains a chemical called aspartame. There is a lot of controversy surrounding aspartame in the medical community. It has been claimed to be linked to both cancer and obesity. However, currently there is no conclusive evidence that supports these claims. The sweeteners used to make sugar-free gum have a sort of laxative effect. Sugar-free gum can cause digestive distress when consumed in large amounts. 
That means if you're a pack-a-day chewer, you might want to consider cutting down or even switching it up with some regular gum every now and then. Chewing gum can cause intestinal bloating. Up to three inches can be added to your waistline as a result of trapped gas in your digestive system. You may want to think twice about chewing gum on a date night, even if your breath is less than minty fresh. It makes sense because when chewing anything, you tend to swallow a bit of air. Chewing gum constantly also means you're swallowing air constantly. So, if you're someone who is prone to bloating, it may be time to ditch the gum altogether. Remember in high school those moments when you reach under your chair and end up sticking your hand directly into a pile of gum? As much as 80 to 90% of gum isn't disposed of properly. One of the downfalls of gum is the massive amount of litter it creates. Chewing gum is the second most common form of litter after cigarette butts. One of the reasons for this is simply because it sticks to the ground. The added effort it takes to remove the gum deters the removal process. Because chewing gum doesn't break down naturally, it's important that you dispose of it properly. In order to remedy this problem, companies are starting to produce gum made from biodegradable substances. But because it's more expensive to produce, it also costs more for the consumer. You know, us. Cities have begun introducing receptacles specifically made for the disposing of gum. Amazingly, gum litter has been cut down by 72% in six months as a result in these cities. While chewing gum is generally accepted by Western culture, many cultures around the world don't feel the same way. Singapore, for example, has completely outlawed gum. If caught spitting your gum on the ground, you could be fined up to $500. That'll make you think twice about littering. You've probably heard the phrase, spit out your gum, said angrily by one of your teachers at some point in your life. Although teachers tend to dislike chewing gum, perhaps because they find it distracting or a mess, recent studies suggest that chewing gum can help you focus, improve memory, and release stress. A study conducted in Japan found that chewing gum may increase brain activity in the hippocampus, an area of the brain associated with memory. While it is not clear exactly why this happens, one theory attributes the phenomenon to the fact that gum increases heart rate. An increased heart rate improves delivery of oxygen to the brain, thus making gum a potential cognitive enhancer. Another common use of gum is to help people stop smoking. When trying to quit, smokers often turn to gum in order to satisfy their oral fixation. According to Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis, an oral fixation stems from unresolved conflict during the oral psychosexual phase. Whether or not you believe him, chewing gum has been shown to greatly increase the chances of successfully quitting cigarettes. Gum that contains nicotine are commonly used to alleviate the difficult withdrawal symptoms that occur after ceasing smoking. Considering cigarettes are an appetite suppressant, many people struggle with weight gain after quitting. Instead of putting a cigarette in their mouth, many people turn to food as an alternative. The gum keeps your mouth busy and the added nicotine released work together to keep your appetite in check and prevent you from putting on the pounds. Unfortunately, many people have difficulty quitting chewing nicotine gum as well. It's recommended that you only use nicotine for 12 weeks. Using the aid for extended periods of time can result in a number of negative side effects that include addiction with intense gum cravings, anxiety, irritability, dizziness, headaches, nervousness, panic attacks, hiccups, ringing in the ears, chronic depression, heartburn, headaches again, and elevated blood pressure. A small and most likely insignificant part of your day has taken thousands of years to get to your mouth. Chewing gum has impacted the world around you in more ways than most imagine. Next time you pop a piece, stop and think of all the other little things you interact with and the countless other journeys they've taken to get to where they are today.